a very pleasant good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you all may be. And welcome to AF Digital's How Interaction Studios Can Help You Create a Personalized Consumer Customer Experience. We are your approved, accredited, and interaction studio partner. Your host for today, Vice President of Experience and Partnership here at AFD. Our agenda for today is to really enlighten everyone on what Interaction Studio is. How can I create a personalized experience? How does it work with other systems? And what's the benefit to my organization? The biggest issue is stagnation. People are afraid of changing, making things happen, or as I say, <laughs> making a power move. If you have the opportunity to increase revenue for your organization, why wouldn't you want to do it? We're here today to help you understand one of those ways to make an impact in the right direction. Now, according to Salesforce research, less than 25% of marketers are completely satisfied with their ability to deliver the right message to the right channel at the right time. Now, marketers want to do this but they just sometimes don't know how to. And sometimes some people are just thinking of, of the older way of doing marketing, but they're trying to transition over into the new day and age. Now, investing in CX initiatives has the potential to double your revenue within 36 months. The Temkin Group found that companies that earned 1 billion in annual revenue can expect to earn an average of an additional $700 million within three years of investing in customer experience. Now, for SaaS companies in particular, uh, they can expect to increase revenue by $1 billion. And according to 2020 State of Connected Consumer Report, almost 80% of B2C consumers say the experience a company provides is as important as its products and services. The number increases to 85% in the B2B sector. Now, you don't want to go losing your customers to the competition. Throughout today's webinar, please feel free to ask questions at any time. Just chat it right in, um, and we'll answer those questions for you. Now, please allow me to introduce two spectacular gentlemen today. We have David and Paul. Now, these two gentlemen have over 20 years of experience in the marketing space. Now, I'm not trying to give away any ages by no means, but they have a lot of experience. Now, without any further ado, over to you two. Great. Well, thank you so much, Romeo, for the introduction. Really pleased to be here today, along with uh, both of my colleagues, uh, Romeo and Paul, to talk to you about Interaction Studio and give you a real life walkthrough of the tool. So just to introduce myself quickly, as Romeo said, i um, been working with Marketing Cloud for quite some time and uh, recently became certified for Interaction Studio as well. And getting to know this platform has been uh, has been a wonderful, wonderful experience so far. And I uh, look forward to uh, going through some of, of what we can do today with you. And uh, now Paul's with me here. Paul, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Interaction Studio. My name is Paul Chang. I'm Marketing Cloud Practice Director at AF Digital. I have been on Marketing Cloud for over 10 years and hopefully we can teach you some things about Interaction Studio today. Well, I do want to start off with um, what is Interaction Studio? Interaction Studio is a real-time management solution. That's very key to understand real-time, which means that we're actually allowing or helping customers on the experiences in real time with utilizing powerful segmentation, customized AI to determine and deliver relevant experiences that expires them to take the next action. It also helps customers or companies like yourself to take to help on what that next be best action might be. So David, let's get into Interaction Studio and really show everyone what happened it's about and how they can really utilize this to increase their ROI. Excellent, yeah, thanks for um, for talking about uh, what Interaction Studio is, Paul. I think it's always good to start with uh, 
the basics. We're not assuming any knowledge coming into this. We know that there are some people on the call who, who might have used Interaction Studio before. Some might have seen a demo. Um, some might know absolutely nothing about it. So um, what I'm going to try and do now is rather than going through a whole bunch of slides that, that might bore you to death, is to actually show you how the product works in a real environment. And hopefully that will inspire you to um, you know, think about how that might work for your organization, ask a few questions in the, in the chat, and hopefully we can all come away with, with some learnings that will be beneficial for you. So <clears throat> on my screen here, you should be able to see, on the left, I have the Northern Trail Outfitters website. This is a, a fictional retailer uh, e-commerce site that Salesforce uses, so it's, it's really great for a demo like this. And then on the right, I have an actual Interaction Studio account, which is running here in our AF Digital Marketing Cloud environment. And what I'm going to do is just take you through a couple simple use cases of how the platform can be used to personalize on the web. Now, as we'll get into, there are many channels that can work with Interaction Studio, but um, we find that the, the web one is a really good visual demonstration of that. So Paul and I are gonna, gonna go back and forth and we, we'll, um, we'll discuss some of the, the high level features of the platform. And then, as we've already said, once we finish up, we'll, um, we'll have a, a bit of a chat with the group. So as I, as I start here on Northern Trail or NTO, what I'm looking at is the very first page of the home, home screen on the left. And so what, what has been captured thus far about me is the bare minimum. This profile here in Interaction Studio says that I'm a user from Sydney and that's it. So I'm an anonymous browser at this point. I've been given an auto-generated user ID, but everything else in my profile is, is completely empty. If I go to the event stream, this is where we're going to have a real-time view of events that are being captured against my profile here. And at the moment, all I've done is start on the home page. What we do have is some basic understanding about the device I was using. Now, as we go through this, just keep in mind that any information that you see that is captured in these events or into a profile can be used in a segment. And we'll, we'll go through what segments are in just a bit. Back on my overview, I just wanna show you some of what is captured on the user profile. So we have a number of different attributes which can be filled as I'm browsing or by any external system that's sending data into Interaction Studio using one of the identity attributes. So you can think of identity attributes as almost like a digital wallet where me as a user might have um, been identified in your CRM system, let's say with a contact ID, perhaps you you were created in Marketing Cloud and you have a contact key, or one of your internal identifiers, let's say. The great thing about this is you can customize the attributes that are important to your business on a user level, and if that attribute is relevant for identification, you can mark it as an identity attribute. The reason that's so important is because what we are looking to do is merge profiles that represent the same person. So often we become disconnected in our marketer world because our customers are using different devices, they are coming back at different times, and we don't have a way to join all those experiences together. With these identity attributes, we can merge profiles whenever we're able to establish that link. So at the moment, I am actually a member of a couple segments that are created here, and we can create our own segments as well. Um, I'm given a low engagement score because obviously I haven't engaged. I've qualified for the Sydney segment based off of the fact that I'm in Sydney and I visited in the last day. So if we quickly just jump over to the segments browser here, this is where these have been configured. And anyone who's familiar with 
any email service provider, uh, email software platform, or um, any segmentation tool will be very comfortable using this, this system because it is very much a drag and drop um, and or logic uh, builder. And you can work with many, many different categories of data to create a segment. As you can see here, I'm not gonna go into all of them right now, but keep this in mind for um, later parts of the demo, is I can create a segment that's based on location, based on visits that have occurred, different actions that have been taken. So for example, an add to cart might be an action, um, a submit form might be an action. I can also, um, as, as shown in the Sydney example, base it on location. So I'm not going to, create a new segment right now, but just be aware that the, the segments are real time in the way that they are calculated. This is so important because, this, yeah, go ahead, Paul. So said, this is where, you know, Interaction Studio really holds its, its own with regards to, you know, having those real time segments created that you can then do some real time experiences. Um, it looks to me like what are these are predefined segments that you've got set up there. Yeah, so some of them are predefined, but as as we just saw, you can you can create a segment and customize it however you want. Uh, even the predefined ones, you can adjust if you don't like uh, the default definition. But um, that'll be great. Yeah, you can see here that so I could once implemented, you know, you you can already start to utilize straight away with regards to segments already being defined for you on what common things that people uh, would want to expect. Absolutely. And so there's, um, you know, when you, when you first start with your account, you'll have some segments and it, it should be pretty clear, uh, you know, what you might want to explore. But the, the reason why um, I started with segments is because that's why these attributes are super important. You, you might want to create segments based off of, attributes that are unique to your business. So keep that in mind when you're determining what attributes are sitting on the user profile. And as we'll get to in a second, there are user, there are attributes that are existing on other elements in Interaction Studio as well, such as the catalog. But before we um, get too much further into the, uh, the technical side of things, let's just click around. So here I am still on the home page. I'm going to go and browse into the men section here and see what is available. And what I can see now is that there's there are subcategories here as well for jackets, tops, and so on, as well as some uh, products that are here shown just for you. But I'm looking for shoes today, so I'm going to click on the footwear category and see what is on sale nothing on sale salesforce you know hasn't hasn't uh, given me a promo code or anything yet but hopefully that'll change maybe if i uh you know show that i'm about to leave let's say uh, i'm going to click into these shoes here and let's just pause to look at what is being captured in interaction studio so we have events that have been uh sent to the system and they're they're happening almost in real time so we have the fact that I went to the men's category and then to the men shoes page as well. And then finally to this specific product page, product detail page, which has all the information about the item that was viewed. If I then go back to my main overview of my profile, I can see that I have looked at the men's footwear category. And then I have also looked at these shoes the, the black ones there um, so these are items in the catalog that i'm seeing this is a catalog timeline of products that i've interacted with but the great thing about interaction studio is that it supports not just a typical e-commerce catalog but many other types as well which i'm going to show you now but I guess what what you know interaction shoe when I gave the definition of it is real time. You know I'm actually seeing you real time look at these shoes, so I can actually if I'm on a call with you be oh thanks David um, I see you're looking at our men's Heidelberg shoes 
how, how can we assist you? Where then makes that experience even not only online, but offline a, a much better experience where the service, customer service agent is able to then talk about a product and not have to be like, oh, okay, what are you, what are you after? What, what do you want to discuss with me? It's very powerful. Absolutely, and hopefully you could see there just how quickly this timeline was populated with the red shoes that I looked at. It's, um, it's about as fast as, as you could hope for. So um, as Paul said, this information is useful, not just for the marketer, but also for customer service agent or anyone else who's customer facing that might need to be empowered by the history of this, of this user, but also taking advantage of recommendations based on what Interaction Studio can provide. And we'll come to that in a moment. Before we do that, let's, let's talk about the catalog. So here in my catalog, I can see that there are many different types of objects that I can use to track user behavior against. These item types come standard with Interaction Studio. However, you can customize them quite a bit. So at the moment, I'm using product promotion and category. But let's just say that you're not selling a product necessarily. Maybe it's a service or if it's, let's say, a higher education website, we might want to have courses be the item that we're selling or promoting. So I might rename, relabel this to courses, and then I might create a whole bunch of attributes that are to do with the course that I'm showing. So this ability to add attributes specific to an item type allows us to be really flexible and dynamic with the rules that we build around that catalog, the campaigns that we can deliver, and the personalization recommend, recommend, recommendation, sorry, that are um, executed from that because they'll take those data points into consideration. So, Ray, the, I really like that article one and blog post. I just wanted to say, David, because I mean, yeah. this means it's not really limited to just only people who actually sell products, but those companies out there that rely heavily on readership of content on their, on their website really can utilize Interaction Studio to help them get gain better insights. Absolutely, and Interaction Studio comes with a couple, a few different modes, I would call them, baked into it. So there's the e-commerce, the SaaS model, and the demand generation. And depending on what type of business that you, or the organization that you belong to, um, you might customize the, the UI, in a sense, based around that. And, and the same goes for the uh, catalog and the item types. So yeah, for if you're a demand gen, then you might mainly be looking at articles, blog posts, and categories, for example. Promotions are really good for, um, let's say that you wanted to offer a dynamic promo code based on a specific customer behavior or segment membership. We can actually um, choose from a catalog of promotions, which might be 5%, 10%, 15% off, depending on the behavior that has been captured and um, the users that have qualified for that, which is really powerful. We also have the ability to associate dimensions with multiple item types. So here in our example, we have color, feature, and gender. What we're saying here is these are characteristics belonging to the product, the promotion, the category, or even the article and blog post that are cross-type but that we want to associate in terms of a user affinity model. So as an example, if I'm um, publishing a blog post about the top 10 best running shoes of 2021, I might be tagging that blog post with certain features of these shoes, whether they're waterproof or um, using a specific foam inside of the sole, um, and those same dimensions would be applied to the products themselves. So what that allows us to do is associate the readership of that blog post with the same sort of affinity modeling as if you just looked at the product page itself. So we're not just single-minded based around um, our e-commerce 
flow and we're taking into account those signals that there, our users are providing. I guess it's also useful for product type um, management, you know, essentially, is this color the right color? Are people even spending time on this and things like that? So, yeah, so it's, it's more powerful in that respect to understand your products, your blogs, time spent, things like that. Absolutely. And, and all of, all of your existing information can just be passed into Interaction Studio into these attributes. So we're not we're not looking to reinvent the wheel in a lot of cases. It's just like Romeo said at the beginning with that stat around marketers um, struggling to be able to activate the personalized experiences. We just need to get the data in, into that platform that's able to um, orchestrate this personalization all at once. So now that I've looked at a couple of shoes, Let's check in on my profile. So I'm just going to run back into the profile fresh here. And what we can see is a few things have changed. So on my timeline, of course, I have the products that I've viewed, but I also have some categories that have been filled in into my affinity profile. And that includes footwear, which has been viewed twice, and hiking, which has been viewed twice as well. If I look at the view time, that hasn't been filled in yet, but that that will take some time. Um, that will take into account the time spent on the website on those specific pages. This is something that a lot of other competing systems struggle with in that if everything is event-based or moment in time, it's hard to take into account the impact of some of those events because some you might look at a page for 10 minutes, or you might look at a page for two seconds and click away. So this allows us to um, gain exposure to that as well. We also have the um, gender affinity that's that's been put together here on my profile, which uh, in Interaction Studio, it is male or female. And uh, we have currently a 100% affinity to men. So this, of course, is not saying that, you know, I'm definitely male, but it's saying that, they, you know, I'm shopping for for a male, but if I was to keep clicking through and look at, you know, products for my wife or my kids and so on, that that will all be taken into account. Uh, we can use that in in segmentation, just like everything else that you've seen so far. So, so just on uh, David, I mean, I guess you know, I do shop for myself, and sometimes I might buy my wife a present. It's not going to automatically change me to female just because I've gone and bought something for a female, will it? Well, that really depends on, you know, how many brownie points you're getting for your wife. You know, if you're shopping for her, you know, on a weekly basis and you hardly ever buy anything for yourself, then you're going to be you're going to be treated uh, with a female affinity, no doubt. But if you're more like me that, you know, sometimes you just kind of check in around the anniversary and the birthday, then uh, it's it's most likely that I'll still get mail mail based recommendations. Yeah, I hope I hope she's not watching uh, this webinar. Of course not. And I think um, there's also, um, you can actually customize that when the gender, when you're, when you're actually, um, when the person's actually going through your site, looking at men and female, you can kind of set some exclusions in that and criteria. Absolutely. If we look at a segment here, this is the men's affinity one. We have, um, if I just open up the setup for it, we can see that it's, it's looking for favorite items where the user's uh, gender is is men, but it's measured by time viewing. We might change that to, to be based around items that have been added to the cart, purchased, reviewed. So there, there are a number of different ways to cut it. And even the, the time, the duration of when those occurred, right? So let's say that, um, you know, I wish you nothing but the best in the future, Paul, but if there was a split and, between you and your wife, and I, I might wanna make sure that we, um, we only looked at activity in the last year so that, you know, we're not basing it off of events that occurred five years ago. And uh, so that's actually quite relevant all across the system, making sure that we're looking at specific durations and not just assuming that because I signed up five years ago and had a few clicks that I should now base my entire behavior off of that. We know that in marketing that we need to attribute a lot of value towards uh, the recency of the behavior as well. Yeah, great. And I think more and more, you know, I think that's the key to understand, you know, setting 
customize criteria for how your business works because you just don't know and you don't want to be serving products that are irrelevant to a person so you know this is the key it actually has great potential but it really needs the input from yourselves to understand the criteria you set and making sure you know Einstein is also providing the right recommendations based on what you feel the affinity should be for that person yeah absolutely so so let's let's now take a look at one campaign in action simple one seeing as we've been talking about gender a little bit uh, if I now go back to the home page of NTO. What we see is that we, we now have a new home page banner that's been replaced, and it's clearly based around men's activewear. And if I click it, it's gonna take me straight to the men's section of the website again. So what we've done effectively is, is create a personalized version of the home page based around just a couple clicks. And, and for that, I really want to just highlight the fact that we often think about that, oh, it takes, it takes you know, months of capturing data to be able to have enough information to do personalization, but there is actually quite a lot of nuance to that. So if we're talking about a machine learning algorithm, yes, it's going to need some time if we're going to be comparing those signals to other users and, and making strong correlations. But there's no reason why any organization couldn't start with a simple use case like that that's driven by my specific activity that I'm capturing and providing me a better experience straight away. Because why should why should the website be based around um, you know men's and women's clothing and apparel if if you know I'm clearly not in the market for that? And and it, the great thing is it can change, right? If I do start browsing for my wife this can change again. No reason why we have to be static in our approach. Great, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I see you, that header is personalized, but how much can I personalize on my website late? Like, you know, I know there's a concept of content zone, so what does that mean and you know, how personalized can I get? Well, the great thing is you're not really limited by Interaction Studio at all. It really comes down to, as an organization, how much are we willing to empower our marketers and our leaders to have access to this real estate? And any, any area on the website can be defined as a content zone, like you said, Paul. And once it's associated as a content zone, the possibilities open up here in the interface. And so what I want to show you is how that looks when I um, was to set up that campaign there. If I go into the Hero Banner up Update campaign and open that up, it's a very friendly interface in that you don't need any technical skills to use it. What we have done is create a template for the, um, which is basically just a form that allows us to fill in the information that we need. So just before that though, we, we set up the campaign targeting rules. So in this case, I've said that I only want this campaign to be targeted to people on a desktop browser, but I could add rules for all sorts of different things, including segment membership or um, excluding particular segments from being allowed to view a campaign. So that right there just gives you that connection to everything else that we've seen and and hopefully will give you a lot of confidence in rolling out your campaigns because the power is in your hands to determine who sees what now great yeah so in, in terms of, yeah okay as well yeah, go ahead paul we'll do, the, we'll do your question uh, first yeah yeah so the, the uh the question here is um are there any insights on time spent on the url uh just to consider someone might have clicked something they didn't intend to click on to and then go somewhere else. So, you know, we, I think I've done that plenty of times. I've gone to move my mouse onto a link and it's gone to the separate link and then I've gone quickly to the other link. Is it time, is it saying, is it taking the uh, minutes of that initial click or seconds to then the next click and how is it defining that? And is that something we can actually define if you clicked on only being there for a second, um, what mm. happens next? Yeah, so we do, we do understand the visit duration and we can augment that with 
any of the custom attributes that you're passing passing into it as well. Um, as I mentioned, any segment that's been configured and that could be done at the page level can be referenced here. So absolutely, we, it's it's really important that we that we don't just take one single click as gospel and go for broke. Um, we do want to take a measured approach. So even though we have done a homepage personalization, that's not you know going to make or break the experience. It's not such a drastic change. Like we wouldn't necessarily want to. Um, you know, prompt the user all in their face based on men's um, men's active wear, but perhaps if we gather a bit more information to say that they've been carefully considering over time, maybe we, we kind of up the ante a bit. But I did just yeah. want to show how each experience is configured. And so what is an experience, first of all? It's each individual version of what is shown to the user. So We've qualified for this campaign saying, yes, you can have your hero banner updated because you have a desktop device and so on. But then I've created two separate experiences, one for men's and one for women's. And it uses a uh, pre-built template so that all I need to do as the marketer is just to fill in a form. Super, super easy. So we know what, what the elements that we need here are an image URL for the background. That's this nice uh, mountainous landscape here. The style, whether it's light on dark or dark on light, we let the marketer choose. And then what do we want to use as the header, subheader, text on the button, and then where does it click through to? And so it's very easy to create multiple experiences and build them out as you wish. You can distribute um, how they are balanced, and you can create control groups as well. Um, Sometimes you might want to do it based on rules. Sometimes you might want it to be completely randomized and both options are supported. Sorry, I've got a couple more questions. Um, it kind of almost a little bit relates, but one is uh, you had a you had it there about men and women's affinity, but uh, the question is just out of curiosity, be inclusive, is Salesforce Marketing Cloud planning to do an option of other for gender? Wow, um, that's a good question. I think you might have to, um, if you create in your uh, gender breakdown um, that as a as an option in the dimension of gender, then I I don't see why not. I think that's uh that's certainly you know it's Pride Month and everything. Let's let's go for yeah, it. I, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I, but I think yeah, from Salesforce, from marketing Salesforce Marketing Cloud, we haven't heard or any update on that. But I think with what David's suggesting is something that you could certainly create um, based on some rules and actions to have it uh, gender neutral. Um, so um, the only other question, the other question we have, sorry, is um, can we define a segment based on purchase behavior? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's one of the um, most important uh, segments that you can have. Let's just see. I've got a high value customers one here, which I can show you. So one of the options that we were looking at before is items. So items is are those items in your catalog, and Based on that, we can say, you know, anything around favorite, add to cart, time spent. So to your point before, Paul, like how long have you spent looking at a particular product of mine? That's taken into account here. Um, what specific items have been in your cart? When was your first time that you that you ordered? How many times have you ordered? ordered? What's your total um, purchases value? All these things can be used in rules to say it must be at most a certain amount of any product, or we could say, you know, a specific product existing in my catalog within a certain span of time. So absolutely, it's very flexible around how product segments can be configured. Great, yeah, I mean, I think that whole purchase segment and that purchase behavior and including the banding cart is a very powerful feature of Interaction Studio, which you can then really, convert people to buy i mean if we think about our own experiences you know today obviously with the pandemic we're now more and more online and really what we're looking for as consumers is the experience that i'm going to be provided through my shopping experience so if i was to be engaged with a company that will continue to help me buy then i'm more likely to go to that company than to another company who i've not heard from after i've tried to purchase yeah, I think that's absolutely right. It's um, it's the differentiator. So I did just want to show you 
I had a pop-up come up here that says, wait, get what's new delivered to your inbox. And the reason that that's happened is because I was moving my mouse up towards my browser bar where I was going to potentially close this tab out. And this is something that Interaction Studio has built in um, to be able to define exit intent. So that can be a trigger to run, in this case, a pop-up campaign that, that's on the web. And the great thing about this is I can use that as a way to capture leads. So I'm going to just enter in my email address and sign up. Um, but in terms of like immediate quick wins, this it's a it's a no-brainer really because any organization has often huge amounts of traffic that are anonymous and never seen again, or they don't take any action that would allow us to um, remarket to them. In this case, I've seen that someone was about to leave and I've popped up a form that is then going to capture information on that email address, join it into my anonymous profile, and all of a sudden I've got a lead that I can remarket to on a number of different channels. Really powerful and simple to set up. So, so uh, David, um... There is another question. Um, is Interaction Studio execution dependent on a login? I suspect this is the case. Is it dependent on a login um, in terms of identifying a user? Well, actually, I was going to ask about this, but I think what the question is around is that how do the how does Interaction identify me on your website? And really, um, what we what we're showing you today is actually. David is, is anonymous and we don't know of any information on David, but we do capture or Interaction Studio does capture everything that he's doing on the website. And then when he does become known, then that merges together. So I guess the question that they're asking is, you don't need to be logged in to be able to capture all this data. You will need to log in or, some, or merge your data into Interaction Studio that to then know who that person is to really serve more relevant content, not only through Interaction Studio, but also things like Journey Builder or using Salesforce CRM, which will allow your customer service agencies to a better, provide the next best action or uh, product for them. Absolutely, and it's such a timely, relevant question. So on my screen here, hopefully it's, it's clear enough, but um, I've actually just merged two users together based on entering that email address. So there's only one recent visitor here, not two, and that's because the two, the the one that was previously um, known has now been merged with the anonymous. So what we have is um, the email address has been filled in. And remember, I talked about, and um, this is to whoever asked that question, um, the identity attributes. And so because email address is one of my identity attributes. That profile, which recently gains the email address from that pop-up that we saw, has been merged with a previous profile that also had email address as an identity attribute. Now, to Paul's point, as soon as I integrate, um, let's say, my Marketing Cloud or my CRM, I'm going to have Marketing Cloud contact key keys that have the same email address. And because of my decision there, I can that will actually merge those profiles as well. So now I have that web behavior merged with my CRM or my Marketing Cloud data. And so that allows me to keep all the previous behavior and join it with the new behavior that we saw that might have otherwise been, you know, left to the side, but now we can join them together and say, this is actually all the same person. Maybe they're browsing on a different device, for example. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think what's key here is obviously we know unknown users, but the key would be to have them log in, have them complete a form just like you did. And now all of a sudden I have merged or interaction has merged the data. You're able to now say, OK, this is David. And now let's serve him some real time content in an email. I do have a, a couple of other questions. Uh, David, I, I want to get through them. So before we, yep. um, sure. How do we actually surface these content zones on our website? Is there some development effort required to set up the zones, and then marketer end users can manipulate these via Interactive Studio? 
Great question. So behind the scenes, Interaction Studio uses what's called a sitemap, and that is a JavaScript snippet that defines all of those content zones. It also defines how the product catalog is, stru is structured in terms of information about products that's automatically scraped in um, to Interaction Studio on the product pages. There's a whole um, structure to that sitemap that needs to be set up properly. Now that is definitely a developer task. That's, some, that's one piece that AF Digital um, definitely supports a lot of customers on um, in terms of getting up and running. But the sitemap can evolve over time, which is to my earlier point about content zone. So we we view it at AF Digital that we we shouldn't we shouldn't be you know holding up these quick wins in an effort to try and you know map out your entire site. But let's just first start by defining a few important page types, some content zones where we can deliver some quick win campaigns, and then make sure that your developers know how to maintain that and what needs to be done you know to expand that and we're we're able to assist with that as well so hopefully that answers your question it does need to be defined in the javascript by a developer but then you can extend on that all right i do another question um so david when you come back to the website another day does it know who you are or will it know it's you again is it based on the ip address or something yeah, good question. So it is based on a first party cookie, the web SDK that is. And so we are using that cookie to identify an anonymous browsing session. However, to the earlier question, if, if you do have a login on your website, then that as soon as the login occurs, then it will be merged based on, on that identifier. Um, of course, you know, cookies are probably on their way out over the next number of years. Who knows how long it's gonna take? So um, there are a number of, of, of ways to help ensure that Interaction Studio can still get data without necessarily relying on cookies. And I would say the event API is, is probably the most um, important solution of all of them because it can work across any system that you have, any internal system, um, or maybe there's a, a third party solution that you're using already um, that has the ability to fire API calls. And if that can um, interface, let's say with your website, get some of um, the information that it needs and um, and send that into Interaction Studio, then that, that would work as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so currently it would remember who you were provided that you still had that same cookie in your browser. Or you going to ask a follow-on question to that, David. Um, what if I'm browsing on my mobile and then my desktop? Does it recognize me as the same person? Yeah, so um, Interaction Studio has a mobile SDK, which if you were anonymous, you would be a separate profile initially, but it would recognize you once you identify yourself, whether it's through one of um, you know, those capture forms like we saw, or if it's through a, a standard login, any anything that um, comes through as an identity attribute would have the ability to merge the, that mobile session or the mobile user profile with the one that was previously on the web. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions there, but I do want to ask a couple more myself just to kind of help customers understand a little bit about Interaction Studio, and it's the affinities. You, you touched a little bit on the affinities, but you know I can see the categories now a little bit um, you know, shaded out or brown. What happens to that, and how do I best utilize that? Is it showing me you know, the more color, the more they are to that affinity, uh, and, and what's my best way to utilize that? Yeah, so um, in addition to the um UI up here, you can also kind of see it represented in a table here, which can be really helpful because you get the detail on the specific um, values. So you can look at each of these affinity dimensions individually, and you can look at it based on purchases, um, purchase value, view time, or views. So that, that's kind of just determining this graph here that looks a bit funky. But um, so if we were to focus on the category, for example, here we can see that breakdown of 
each unique category, the number of views, the view time, and so on. So I would say that the, the affinity wheel is just a way to visualize the underlying data, and you can customize that, sure, depending on what type of site you are, like we spoke about earlier. But um, the main thing is that you have all of this information captured at the correct level. I did just want to show you um, in the catalog itself, if we look at the categories that we have, you have the ability to use a hierarchical structure. So rather than trying to you know, flatten your website and look at everything on the same level, we can see that if I go into the men's category, then we have subcategories, tops, accessories, and so on. Even in footwear, there's another level down for boots, casual, and hiking. So it's, that allows you to really tap into the structure of your website and do calculations based on what particular level of the hierarchy that, that you were talking about at that point. Great, yeah, okay. I do have another question that's come in. Uh, can the business communicate to you if you are anonymous? Hmm. You can communicate from the standpoint of on the panel or the, um, the experience that you're in. So on this web channel, you're anonymous, but we can communicate to you because we can provide real-time um, messaging to you, whether that's like an in-app message that's customized for you in the chatbot down here, or the pop-up, or even an info banner. So this, this blue um, info banner up at the top, that is actually a content zone defined. So if I really wanted to, I could completely personalize this message based on something unique to me if I had enough information. So while you are limited to this environment because I haven't identified myself yet, there is actually quite a bit you can do depending on what you can collect during the course of that, that web session that was anonymous. So I guess, I guess, yeah, I mean, utilizing segments and campaigns is, is really the key here. I mean, you can get as granular as you want. I want to find anyone who's looked at, you know, a particular footwear and then show them that as they come back to the site. Um, yeah, and, and I think, yeah, communicating anonymous is, is most definitely the real advantage because it's real time. It's while I'm on the site, it's going to start utilizing um, the Interaction Studio to really serve me the right content. And then, yeah, yeah as so I said, I mean, the key would be to have some of these pop-ups and, um, you know, obviously we've shown you a lot about how you can personalize someone's experience um, and David's showing you the pop-up. I think that's uh, a lot of companies we see utilizing Interaction Studio as the first use case is that pop-up, um, intent to exit, um, too much time spent on a product, you know, or not enough time clicking on the right product. So, for example, if you wanted to, if you're e-commerce and they haven't purchased yet and they're still on your site for three, five minutes, maybe then it's a pop-up to show, hey, how can we help you? Or, you know, here is some um, ways you can purchase from us, you know, so I think that's mm. really key to and how you serve anonymous users to then become known users once they do go to that purchase journey. Yeah, and just one final thing here. This is um, another example of a web personalization campaign where we're doing a, a product recommendation based off of what was previously shown. So um, here on the right, you'll see like there's this chat bubble showing up whenever I um, have a campaign that's served. And so PDP recommendations is the um, Einstein recipe that I've set up for recommending, in this case, it's shoes, but it could have been anything. It's, it's, it's taking into account behavior and um, I don't think we have time to go into the detail of this today, but happy to you know, follow up with anyone who, who has any other questions. But um, the great thing about Interaction Studio is that you have the option of using rule-based, um, strictly driven logic to define campaigns like this. You can, use, com you can be completely dependent if you want on AI in the Einstein algorithms that are, that are chosen or you can have a mixture of the two, which can be really effective because you define the boundaries of the AI based on the business rules that are important or, or necessary. And then within that, that uh, area, you can allow the, the algorithm to learn and, and you know, measure the effectiveness against the control group. And, and we've got some really great questions, David. I wanna get them in um, before we uh, need to jump off. But, um, how would you translate this 
Uh, how would this translate to personalizing in an email? Does personalization need to be rebuilt in Marketing Cloud using the Affinities data? Great question. So the short answer is no, it doesn't need to be rebuilt. Um, what you can do in Interaction Studio is set up an email campaign, and this allows you to define multiple content zones, not just one, where you have, let's say, a personalized hero banner in your email, followed by personalized product recommendations below, and you can add more content zones as you wish, and you can link them into specific products if you're doing a product recommendation, or you can um, pick from just assets manually if you wish. But the outcome of this campaign is a bit of HTML like this, and these can be either combined together or if you're used to working in Marketing Cloud or any um, ESP that uses modules, you would just have to copy and paste this HTML into the content block and then you're good to go. There's nothing else to do. Um. Another question, you are an anonymous, then you sign up, will that automatically create your profile in Marketing Cloud? Good question. It could if you want it to. So I guess that depends on um, the architecture of how your, your sign-up process works today. You might already be sending uh, welcome emails through Marketing Cloud when someone signs up, and if so, then um, that would occur already. There is the ability to do a nightly sync with Marketing Cloud automatically, and same with Salesforce CRM, which allows you to pass data back and forth using that integration. Um, and that's where we see you know, some of the automatic profile stitching happening without the need to do any sort of manual, manual work. But if you really wanted to, you could use Interaction Studio to capture the sign-up event and then trigger into a journey as the welcome as the welcome message. But it, there's a lot of nuance there in terms of how you want your subscriber keys and so on, but we don't need to get into that now. Good question. I think I'll lead to the next question. Sorry, Romeo, last question. How well does it integrate with Marketing Cloud? For example, can you trigger an abandoned cart journey from IS? Bonus points, if the customer purchases the abandoned cart off the back of the first email, can IS tell Marketing Cloud to exit content from the contact from the journey so they don't receive the second email? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the Interaction Studio has a specific method for doing abandoned carts that does allow enough time and ensure that the trigger is only sent to Marketing Cloud once sufficient time has passed to qualify that as an abandonment and that the user has not in the meantime purchased that product or, or done you know, an action that we would not want to see happen. Of course, once they're in the journey in Marketing Cloud, you can do a, a once-off uh, additional check if you have access to that data. But in short, you probably want to use Interaction Studio's trigger to then send the, um, the email straight away. Some great questions, and I want to thank you. Romeo, take it away. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Um, I find that um, a lot of people have received some of the value of how IS works. Um, and especially the value that it pushes behind personalization. Um, I, in short, because I know we're running out of time, and I, I would love to open up the floor for more Q&A, um, but we can definitely follow back up with that later on. Um, but for some quick takeaways, uh, today we covered a real-time personalization platform, uh, a way to help you amplify your website, which is Interaction Studio. Uh, this solution helps you bridge the gap to have more unique experiences and directly impact your potential and current customers. Now, marketers, IT individuals, architects, C-level execs, they all wanna do this, but it's really about understanding how to do it, and <laughs> we understand how to do it. Um, so we'd love to speak to you a little bit more about transitioning over and getting this journey underway. Now, some quick takeaways, as you can see here, uh, um, it really shows you that there's so much behind the solution. There's so much you can do. It can help you with everything from personalizing your emails, abandoned car, abandoned page, helping out with loyalty, even email personalization across the board and many more other ways. But in closing remarks, I encourage everyone uh, to start their personalization digital journey. Now, 
it would be great to start it with AF Digital. Um, we're here today to help you understand the differences behind the impact that customer experience has. And we're here to assist you along that journey. Now, please feel free to reach out to david.robot at afdigital.com, paul.chang at afdigital.com, or myself, Romeo, at afdigital.com, or any one of our uh, esteemed colleagues here at AF Digital. Please find us on LinkedIn, or of course, directly on our website. Now, we would love to hear from you all. Thank you everyone for your time. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.